Selamat malam. Apa kabar? Tatia, Wan Sang Hao. My fellow Singaporeans, thank you for being with us tonight. As I said last night, you are a source of strength. Can we please make some noise and remind the people in Nisun GRC that we're here? Back during GE 2011, can you remember the PAP mentioning that they were planning for Singapore's population to grow up to 6.9 million? Can you remember? They didn't raise that issue back then. They were silent. They continued with this secret policy to bring in large numbers of foreign talents. I'd asked in early 2013 at the Pongal East by election whether the PAP intended to continue to import more people onto our already crowded and congested island. I had mentioned what was obvious to all Singaporeans, that our public infrastructure was already bursting at the seams as a result of the strain caused by unchecked increase in immigration that was encouraged by the PAP. At the same time, there was an ongoing national conversation organized by the PAP where citizens' views were apparently sought on national issues. Did you guys go to this national conversation? Uh? <laughs> Unless they were speaking to the wrong people, they should have taken on board the citizens' concerns instead of ignoring us. The PAP suddenly ignored the practical reality that our infrastructure was not ready to accommodate the sheer number of workers that they were importing in. This is at a rate virtually unprecedented in any country in the world. In 2013, the population white paper was sprung upon unsuspecting Singaporeans. The debate was the, sorry, the paper was debated in Parliament shortly after the Pongolese by-election. All of the Workers' Party MPs were against passing this misconceived and erroneous piece of legislation. You don't have to be an academic, an economist, a sociologist to question the thinking behind this population paper. It's been described as overly mechanistic, economically simplistic, and astonishingly sociologically and politically naive. In short, it's just wrong. To be fair, some PAP MPs, notably Mr. Indijit Singh, spoke up passionately against the passing of that legislation. Despite the recent debate by WP MPs, amongst others, the PAP, by virtue of their supermajority in Parliament, stubbornly passed the population white paper. They made it law. When it came to voting for or against, not a single PAP MP voted against the passing of this bill, except for brave Mr. Indigit, who somehow managed to avoid la. Mr. Lee Sien Long, he faced resistance over the figure of 6.9 million. He sought to reassure Parliament that pop the population would be significantly below the planning perimeters of 6.9. However, very recently, the PAP's Ms. Sim An at the recent GE dialogue at NUS said just last month, still defending the population paper's 6.9 million figure, she said, how do we continue to generate the kind of economic activity without an increase in population? Let's look at economic activity and the lackluster domestic economy that we're experiencing today. The PAP say that the productivity of Singaporeans is lagging. The PAP is rather indirectly saying that it is the fault of Singaporeans that our economic activity is slowing. That's why we need to increase the population according to them. Has the PAP though, 
Have they focused on ensuring that Singaporeans keep their competitive advantage and stay productive in a global, knowledge-based economy? Has the PAP, when guarding its lunch, guarded your lunch? I don't think so, you know. Let me give you an example. Just before the debate on the population white paper, Mr. Corbun Wan had praised Australian workers. He'd said that there was a 10-story building in Melbourne. It was completed ahead of schedule. It only required four skilled workers, two crane crew, one supervisor. Four skilled workers, two crane crew, one supervisor. My math is bad, but I think it's four, five, six, and seven, right? Seven workers. During the course of the parliamentary debate, Mr. Corbun Wan justified the need to ramp up our population. He said if the population paper is not passed, he would not be able to deliver HDV flats as he needed more foreign workers to build them. I want you guys to ask the question, why, given the PAP has been in power for 50 years, why they did not work much earlier to ensure that our younger generation of Singaporeans would be productive, well-paid, and become entrenched core assets in a knowledge-based economy, like the skilled Australian workers that Mr. Koh was praising. Based off Mr. Koh's productivity calculations for the Australians he admired so much, and again, my math is bad, but 10 stories, seven people. 21 Singaporeans, took up right, enough to build a 30-story HDB block. The PAP have been talking about a knowledge-based economy since the late 90s. Yet the PAP in the last 10 years at least has not meaningfully looked at preparing young Singaporeans to fully realize their potential or look to raising Singaporeans' real incomes. The PAP could have looked much earlier to organizing our educational institutions, training our young Singaporeans, encouraging productivity enhancements with local businesses, so that instead of hiring 100, 300 foreign workers, we just require a few Singaporeans to do this. This is an opportunity that has been missed. If I was a young Singaporean 10 years ago, how old would I be today? I'd be coming out into the workforce. Hopefully, I would have been well-trained. I'd be prepared to add value in this knowledge-based economy. Employers would also be happy. They require less labor. Local businesses might actually make more money. If the PAP had the will to look out for Singaporeans and to provide them with various pathways to success, and to ensure that Singaporeans have knowledge-based skills, the future of our younger Singaporeans that enter the workforce today would be much, much brighter. Our domestic economy would be stronger. It would be thriving. Singaporeans would be well-paid, have job security, and would be optimistic about their futures. We would need the immigration numbers. We would need much less in terms of immigration numbers to keep our economy in the black. I just want to ask you guys, huh? is this good or bad planning on the part of the PAP? Is it good? Is it bad? We remain a developed country reliant on third world labor solutions. ESM Go had recently asked Singaporeans to consider the long-term prospects of the country. Well, let's consider this. The PAP continued to largely ignore their continuing mistakes. They remain stubborn on focusing on the solution to raising our economic uh, uh, um, uh, uh, rates by increasing our population. This has led to suppression of productivity among Singaporeans, the suppression of our real wages, and the suppression of a dynamic, thriving economy. The continued focus on short-term economic gain by the PAP without considering the medium and long-term well-being of our fellow Singaporeans and the long-term economic health and vitality of our country is the path to the rack 
and ruination of Singapore. Do consider the long-term prospects of an unchecked PAP-managed Singapore. Let us not ignore the perils of one party that really cannot check itself. You can give the PAP what it wants, absolutely kosong opposition in Parliament, or you can give us your vote and elect more workers' representatives into Parliament so that we have a more balanced political, social and economic environment. Vote Workers' Party! Undila Fati Fakaja! Empower your future!